top of the day to you guys. I have to get back down here to uh, the apartment where I did all the drywall patches and stuff. The uh, the painter stuck his finger in it. You know what I'm saying? He uh, he um, put a coat of mud on my stuff yesterday, and I don't. You know I appreciate it, man. Whatever. But he used that 20 minute mud. 20 minute mud sets up a lot faster uh, and it's real hard um, when you go to sand it. It's real hard. <coughs> it's like trying to use the bucket mud that says top coat. That stuff's really, really hard um, versus my mud soft. It's easier sand. Anyways, we're going to check it out real quick. So he put a coat of mud on top of that. So now I got to knock those high ridges, the high ridges off and uh, float that again. And same way in the bathroom, he went through and he painted some of this, but not all of it yet. He was uh, just doing ceilings uh, and it looks like he painted it on top of my mud over here. So yeah, that's just stupid. Why is that all cracked up? I don't know. Anyways, I gotta clean that up a little bit. So I had a couple questions came through on uh, the last video. It's dark in here, right? Dark. I had a couple questions come through on the last video. One was about the mud. Does it stick to everything or stick to, yeah, it sticks to everything, man. Whatever you put that on, it sticks it on. It's pretty good stuff. Um, and then my spray foam. Spray foam is the, the red can. Uh, you can also use this as a fire retardant, you know, fire break. Um, it's just a gap. That's all it is. Um, but I have the gun, and I love this because I can shut it off. Uh, and then the end will have some, you know, have a little bit nasty on there. And so all you do is just break that off. Clean off that tip a little bit, and you're good to go. About once, I don't know. You'll get this too every once in a while, but that's not a big deal. About once every six months or so, I'll actually take my gun apart and there's a cleaner that you can, uh, it's a can, you screw it on there too, and it cleans out this debris on the inside. Cause you'll get that on the inside. If you leave this open and forget, if you don't shut this, um, screw it in all the way this stuff will dry inside the tube and then you won't be able to get anything out so you always got to make sure you close it these are not too expensive <clears throat> um, i think this one this is not too old it's about a year old because the last one i'd lost but it's uh i think they're about 50 bucks for this gun but then the cartridge or the container they're about nine bucks something like that so it's not too bad, not too hateful. It's perfect for what I do because I use it for gaps and all kinds of stuff. So I, I use that for everything. You know, we got a hole in a cabinet, any kind of holes, man, you can fill it in with that. The other stuff is a little, um, I think it's, I think it's yellow. No, it's blue. The blue can. It, I think it's that one. It's, it's harder. So when it expands, it will actually swell out. So like if you're trying to insulate around a door jam, uh, an exterior door jam, you gotta watch it using that stuff because it'll actually swell your door jam out. Then your door won't freaking close. But usually what I'll do on that is that when I'm doing a door is I'll spray that in after I've put the exterior trim on, I'll spray it in the gap and then I'll put my interior trim on. That way it, it prevents that foam from ex expanding the door joint or the door jam out. Anyways, this is going to be a great day, man. Uh, the new maintenance guy, apparently he's going to move up here too. That will be interesting. Maybe. Both of us at the same property. We'll be fighting for work. <laughs> Literally, man. They'll probably end up putting us on a renovation, stuff like that, because, you know, two maintenance guys in the same place. Well, you can't have my job. <laughs> that ain't gonna happen. 
Anyways, I get to knocking some of those high spots off. Uh, I did notice in the bathroom. I'll show you. I did notice in the bathroom that that looks wet. That's what happened to that was it, there was a wet spot. So I got to put an excess panel in there anyways. So I'll go ahead and cut that out and put my excess panel in there. Uh, and then we'll worry about texturing the ceiling because you can see it's, this is a, a roll. Somebody's used a roller and roll drywall mud on there. And that's how you get that look. So I've been doing this long enough. I can, I can tell now something's been put up. I used to be real famous uh, a couple years back. I was real famous for uh, drywall textures and stuff. I'd have people, contractors call me up and have me come out and repair ceilings where they have uh, had to cut a hole out, you know, for something. And then they patched the drywall, but then they needed it to blend in. You learn real quick, man, when you're doing this stuff, how to blend them ceilings in. But... So I don't have a lot going on today, but we'll get that uh, we'll get that cut out, and I'll flip the mud out a little bit. Cool beans. I'll get into some, bro. Guaranteed. So this is my access panels. You can get these in different sizes. You can get them a little small. Can, I think it's I think you can get one a little bit bigger than this. But these are perfect, man, for what above the tub area, um, or if you've got a water line in the wall that you've had to open up. Uh, like behind a bathtub or something like that, instead of putting drywall back and all that freaking trim crap, you can put these on. Um, they're pretty simple. It has a, it has a rim and you cut the drywall the same size as this, this frame, right? And then the trim just pops into the hole. You can see the picture. And then the door pops on and off. So it's perfect for going above a bathtub if you've got tub issues with the drains leaking versus uh, the old school way of just putting up a, a piece of drywall or a piece of plywood and putting trim around it. It just looks like shit when you do that. But at least this has got a more professional look to it. Um, plus it's vinyl so you can paint it so it, it disappears a little bit. It's not as harsh, but like I said, you can get those in different shapes or different sizes, and you can get actually elongated ones too. Um, your HD supply carries them, Lowe's, Home Depot, all of the the uh, all of the home improvement stores have them. So let's get to cutting the hole, bro. All right. So when you get your uh, <clears throat> get your access panel out. <clears throat> I like to set it up to where I'm right up against the ceiling, dead center with the, well, I'll try to be dead center with the, the shower head. And then I'll, I'll ring it around on the inside, like so. And then I know I need to cut on the outside of that line. So if I cut it out on the outside line, I know I'll be tight. You don't want it real loose. Um, and what you can do is once you've, you've got it cut out, You'll just run a bead of a power grab around the rim and stick it up there. And that'll hold it in place. But let's get to cutting, man. That's loud. water on the back of this so I gotta figure out where this freaking water is coming from there's no water on the back of that so anyways now we'll take the panel and just try to drop at it 
I need to take it back and over just a hair. So over just a hair. Back just a little bit. <laughs> keep these things tight so if I just trim that off just a hair in the corner <laughs> Water's coming from. You know that's what? I wonder if it ain't her toilet. I might have to go upstairs and check her toilet. So good thing about this is now I know that that uh this is okay. What I'll do is I will um I'll put a texture on it. Because I'll have to blend it out with the rest of the stuff. So, cool beans, man. All right, so I got um, uh, got that hole cut out and ready to go on that. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to do a little bit of mud, um, mix up some mud, and do the the surface, the last coat on those holes. Kind of clean up the living room a little bit, and then we'll I'll go get the uh, my small bucket of uh, pre mixed mud. And that's what I use for ceilings. Don't ever use bag mud for texture. The reason why is because on bucket bag mud or powder mud, whatever it looks like when you when you stop working with it, that's what's going to look like when it dries. Versus bucket mud, bucket mud's got a lot of water in it, so when it dries, it shrinks up. So it doesn't always look the same when it dries. So that's the reason why I use bucket mud for doing textures because it'll shrink up and it, it softens itself up a little bit. So anyways, we'll go, uh, I'll, I'll put a coat of mud on this real quick and then I'll go get the supplies. And on, no, on just a note, just so you know, man, whenever you're using this powder mud, don't wash it down the sink. I always scrape my pan out and put it on just anything. Um, if you're in a bacon, you don't have anything you can pour it out on. You can pour it out on the countertop, let it dry, and then pop, hit it on the bottom, it pops right off. Um, but when you go to clean your tools, you know, get this excess off, that's fine. But don't ever, don't ever dump that much material down the drain because it's hard. So it'll set up in the drain and clog your drain up. So I've seen people do that. So just be mindful, man. You can wash a little off in your sink, but don't do it a whole bunch down the drain. So with that ceiling being wet and stuff, I went ahead and added a little bit of mud to it to kind of smooth it out a little bit. But so what I decided to do, since it's not raining, is that light. I'm gonna see if I can't rehang that light. It's uh, it barely hanging on. Let's go do it. Oh. So, it's just barely hanging on. It's already pulled out. Why they did it this way, I have no idea. Whew, I got, I got a problem with heights. So, let me see if I can get that off real quick. Well, I was able to get that off. Well, I was able to get it off starting to rain again so what we'll have to do is we'll have to get a whole new setup for this and there's a big puddle of water right there and I'm trying to stay out of it fucking with electrical <laughs> well yeah you can see the box man they uh 
No stainless steel screws, no nothing. This is screwed right to the freaking wall. So I have to get a new light fixture. Cause it uh, stripped itself out. It has a screw in it, but the screw stripped itself out. So we just have to get a new light fixture. I need one for that bottom, that last building too. So not a big deal. I was just trying to get it done, man, before it got really cold and really windy. Cause right now it's about, it's about 38 degrees out here. It's freaking cold. Plus I got water sand on the roof. So anyways, I'm just going to do something else, man. Well, I can't do anything. It's starting to rain on me. I get parts for that uh, light. We'll do it later. Probably tomorrow. Anyways, just thought I'd do a little two of you. You guys want to know something that uh, can really make you stand out um, uh, to your fellow employees or maybe your manager. Um, yeah, it's going to cost you a couple bucks. It's not free, man. But I give you some good advice. This is what I got. This is a Klein T1 or TI250 thermal imager. This is what I use all the time for looking for water leaks, uh, checking out um, my um, baseboard heaters, uh, the boiler heaters. I can see the water flowing through the pipe. Um, it, it's got different settings on it. You can actually, on the top, you can take pictures with uh right here take pictures to show somebody what's up um it's got different settings of course it comes with the manual and tells you all the good stuff you can change the temperature up and down because right here is the temperature what what the range is you can change that so that say you want uh you're looking for cold you can change it to uh be colder than this but Anyways, it takes a minute to calculate sometimes. But anyways, if there was any kind of advice I could give you on a tool that would make your job easier, make you look better to the boss, to your supervisors, whatever, it would be this. little thermal camera, man. It's the cheapest one you can buy that's got the camera on it. Um, and they're 300 bucks, man. If you shop around, you can find them a little bit cheaper than that. I, I bought mine at uh, an HVAC company, Johnstones, and I was able to get it for, I think it was like uh, 270 or something like that. I mean, but the company paid for it. I was going to pay for it, but then I thought, well, why am I paying for this? I can make the company do it, you know? But maybe you work somewhere where you'll buy the tool and they'll reimburse you. Maybe that'll work out. But you have to prove the tool its value. This thing has saved me countless, countless times. Um, there's a video back. Uh, one of my videos, uh, it has the gremlin picture. It's about um, a leak from hell or something like that. I forget what video it was. But it was, the water was leaking on the third floor, but it was coming out on the first floor. It was actually tracking across the ceiling on the second floor going down the wall. And that's why it messed me up because I couldn't figure out where the water was coming from. But I was able to use this on the second floor and see it tracking across the ceiling. And that saved me a lot of time and trouble. I was going to have to cut that ceiling out, blah, blah, blah. I and mean, you guys know what it's like to cut a ceiling out. Because then you got all this drywall repairs. You're in and out of the apartments. But you're talking about a game changer. You get yourself one of these. It'll definitely look, make you look a lot better to your manager eyes. Save the company money. Save you time and frustration trying to find a freaking leak. Plus, plus for instance, maybe you're trying to figure out, um, maybe you got a blockage in a water line. You know, you can take the thermal camera and you can, wa you can walk the water line and see where the water's stopping at. Maybe it's hot water. You know what I'm saying? Um, or something to that effect. I've never tried to do that, but it'll work. I've used it on my um, hot water boiler, uh, the baseboard heaters that use the hot water boiler, and I, I watch the valve open up, and I can see the water flowing through the water line. So, I mean, that, and plus you can show the tenant that. See, check this out, man. See, you, you got hot water. You know what I mean? So, just a little cool trick for the trades, man.
give it a shot, man. Hopefully that works out for you. You know, the thing I was thinking about that, if you have aqua flows, which is the furnace uses the hot water um, to heat the apartment. I've worked on a couple of those. Um, you could use that to tell whether or not your one-way check valve is working. Because if it, on those aqua flows, um, you, you'll get tenant calling saying, man, I got no hot water. But you know the hot water is working. It's because the check valve on the thermal is not working and it's blowing, it's pulling water backwards on it. So you can set that thermal camera up here and look right at the water line and you can tell whether or not that water's going what way it's going. You know what I'm saying? So anytime you got a temperature or some troubleshooting something, you could use that on it. I don't even use my th thermal camera or a thermal gun anymore. Uh, like my thermostat, I don't even use it anymore. I don't even care because I always have this in my bag, you know? So I use this for reading the temperature coming out of the vents, you know, HVAC, you can read your coil on your air conditioner on the coil on the inside. Well, with me, mine's flat faced. I can see it easily, but I can look on there and I can see whether or not I got any blockage in the coil, uh, what part of the coils coldest versus hot you know what I mean so there's all kinds of little neat little things you can use this for um, not just ooh, look I got a pretty picture you know what I'm saying so just think about it and what you can do man you know 300 bucks man that's a lot of money for one tool that you might use maybe once or twice a month you know what I mean what you should do on that is take like 50 bucks a paycheck set it aside for the tool or you can hawk your wife or your girlfriend for a day i'm just joking man i'm just playing around guys all right man i don't have anything else to do today uh it's kind of an early day for me it's 2 30 man i ain't got nothing else to do so i'll probably call today on this one we see you tomorrow bro